All right, I think we are live. Um, so I, that brings us to today's virtual fireside chat with Honor Bell Walker. Um, so for those of us who aren't familiar with this, my name is Kyron Loggins. I'm a member of the Hidden Genius Project's fourth cohort. And today we're gonna be talking just about, you know, black success, um, what it means to be an entrepreneur, what it means to, you know, think of success in general outside of the box in 2021 as a young black man. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest today, Honor Bo. Would you like to introduce yourself, give a few words? Yeah, thank you, Kyron. Um, my name is Honorable, I'm from Oakland, California, uh, born, born and raised. Um, I'm actually an engineering student right now um, at the University of San Diego. Um, and I'm out here right now, just trying to work on the startup divine. And I'm super excited to be here. For sure. Um, so I guess we can just jump into it. Um, and to start us off, I would just ask, you know, what were your first interactions with technology growing up? You know, what was your introduction to black tech? Right. Um, so I guess like one of my earliest memories was uh, my grandfather who used to kind of work on cars. He had a neighbor who also worked on cars and I would kind of go over in North Oakland and just kind of help him out. Always was super curious as to like what he was doing at the time. Um, and then I used to also go to technology camps at UC Berkeley, um, all over the Bay, um, you know, robotic camps. I was never good at coding, but the hardware was always like something that I was good at, like taking things apart, putting things back together. And I would say that was like my earliest memories of uh, me just being super interested in technology. For sure. And you know, like when you were little growing up, what was the first thing you really wanted to be? What were your ambitions? Right. Um, I would say, I mean, I feel like most students or most, you know, kids in Oakland, I think obviously you want to be an athlete or a rapper, right? Um, nothing wrong with it. But I think the more I grew and the more I learned about like technology uh, and entrepreneurship, I started having a deep passion for engineering and architecture. Um, so that kind of goes to, I was in the fourth grade where they actually just built um, the Cathedral of the Light in Oakland. It's actually right on Lake Merritt and it's like a really nice church, um, you know, super like really innovative for the time period super it was sustainable um, and it you know changed the environment of the lake you know so I took a visit there um, when I went to St. Martin de Porres which was my local Catholic school in Oakland um, in West Oakland and ever since then I just looked at the architecture I'm like whatever like this job is like I want to do it I want to design I want to you know um, help kind of change the community and make this a space so that people can uh, interact and you know create uh, positive relationships. Definitely you said like design um would you consider that one of your passions or what are your passions, especially, I think, you know, when you were younger or uh, as a younger man than you are now? Right. Um, yeah, I would say design is big. Um, I think, you know, using creativity and then especially when that creativity gets to kind of like changing communities. And then once you, once you get that, uh, that creativity to develop technology to help change those communities, then I would say like, absolutely. Um, and also kind of felt like design was a interesting space because it's kind of a, a intersection between like engineering right math science and then you have the art aspect you know where i think most you know kids are artists naturally creative um and i feel like my goal is to kind of bring this like art out into engineering and architecture and make it make it more known and kind of um bringing the disciplines together definitely um you know when did you kind of decide that entrepreneurship was a way that you could do that when did you kind of become aware that that was an option. Right. Um, well, I guess like kind of taking a step back, I looked at my family where I have like my grandfather, Niger he's from Nigeria, came here when he was 19. Um, he's always done entrepreneurship from real estate, owning businesses, right? My mom has owned multiple businesses in Oakland. My auntie is the same, my dad, the same thing. Um, and then I think the overall entrepreneurship kind of just stuck with me, you know, and I kind of gravitated towards it at a young age because I was seeing, um, you know, people do this um, daily and I was helping them out with certain things as well. Um, and I would also say that, you know, being from Oakland, everyone kind of has a little bit of an entrepreneur like spirit, you know, like we like to get it, you know, to the best, uh, to the best that we can. And um, we want to kind of do things our way and kind of bring that cultural aspect of things and even you know, going back to changing community, that's kind of what we wanted to do. And the people that I mentioned before, that's all they did. They helped the community and they you know, were doing certain things to elevate you know, us in the community. So I think that was definitely some of my earliest members of entrepreneurship and then kind of 
talk, kind of incorporating that with technology. I look at I looked at some of my um, like man mentors or some people that I like were role models, right? Um, kind of like Elon Musk, right? Where he's doing some stuff with Neuralink, you know, SpaceX, Tesla, uh, the Boring Company, and you know the list goes on. And I look, I'm like, well, whatever he's doing, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And you know, he's making some you know pretty cool changes, not only for our community, but also outside of like the world, like you know, through Mars exploration um, and just you know stuff like that. Definitely. Then, you know, you talk about mentors and role models, and I think, um, you know, that's a great segue for us to get into the Hidden Genius Project. And um, I guess my first question for you with relation to that would be, what was your time at the Hidden Genius Project like? And how did you kind of, you know, grow yourself and evolve through that experience? Right. Um, okay, so when I first heard about the Hidden Genius Project, I was in the eighth grade. I was graduating eighth grade. And I met Brandon at a um, at a gala, and you know he was kind of telling me about the Hidden Genius Project. And at first, I was kind of like, eh, like I don't know if I want to do it, just because it's like eighth grade summer. This is the summer before me going to boarding school, so I kind of was like, I just kind of, I just want to, you know, focus on sports and just kind of hang out with the family. And it wasn't something that I was super passionate about. But then the moment that I actually got to the Hidden Genius Project in East Oakland, um, I fell in love, you know, with technology. I fell in love with the with the brotherhood, most importantly. And um, the mentors were just, you know, they were great. You know, I haven't really had any, because I'm the only boy in my family, I haven't really had any like male mentors, like, as, especially as many as I got in the Hidden Genius Project. So, um, you know, they were always super supportive, kind of helped me think outside the box, um, taught me how to carry myself as an individual, as a man, as a, you know, person living in society, um, you know, kind of going to Facebook and Google and different, you know, tech companies, they taught us how to carry ourselves in these spaces where, we are the minorities um, and we are not represented in like the best light, you know? So I say like that the Hidden Genius Project has definitely um, made huge impacts in my life, especially when it comes to development and um, figuring out how to, you know, I would say become a leader. Yeah, and then, you know, um, talking about development, I know you did, um, you took part in the alum Alumni Venture Seed Fund with the Hidden Genius Project uh, that just recently wrapped up. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that? Yeah. Um, so last summer at the start of COVID, um, I started a company called Divine Errands. And essentially it was an errand it was a platform where we ran errands for old like older the older people and seniors, um, seniors and small businesses because they were affected the most by COVID. So I had, you know, some of my grandmother's uh, friends, you know, calling me and saying, like, I need this, this, and this, you know, I don't want to go out. You know, so I was like, okay, like this is gonna be easy way for me to make some money, just creating a business around it. And that's what I was doing last summer. Um, and then um, I would say, I kind of talked to Sean about that. And then he was like, yo, like you should come be on board with the alumni, um, the Venture Seed. And then we kind of have been working through the, we've been working through the process and kind of helping me understand like what it means to be a leader, what it means to be a CEO of a company. How do you, you know, like what are the legal, um, the legal requirements for starting a company? And how do you grow your network? You know, um, my network has increased like 200% since I've been on LinkedIn, you know, on since I've been with the Venture Seed program. And I think the amount, the, the amount of like information that I'm learning and applying is, is so much, you know, like I haven't been able, I haven't learned this much information and applied it, you know, in a long time. And even I'm in school full time and I'm still not applying like half this information that I'm learning, but the Venture Seed has done a great job with that. Definitely. And you know, you kind of speak to some of those skills that you've been developing in the Alumni Venture Seed Fund. Um, you know, what are some of those skills that I think that, you know, if you haven't done entrepreneurship or if you haven't pursued it, you may not know that um, are required. What are some of those things that you've been learning? Right. Um, I would say generally, I think when, you know, other people look at CEOs, you know, and they look at certain businesses, they kind of look at, oh, like they're doing X, Y, and Z, or they're doing, you know, let's say Elon Musk, right? Oh, he has Tesla, he has, you know, SpaceX, and he has all these companies. But people don't really understand that it's really like an iceberg, you know, where it's like you have the tip, right? But then under is just a bunch of stuff, a bunch of information you have to have to understand. It's a certain way you have to carry yourself. And I think something that uh, the Venture Seed has kind of allowed me to explore is understanding how you need to know pretty much every like aspects of the business, you know, from the legal teams that you have to set up, the legal entities you have to set up, um, you know, the beachhead markets that we have to set up, um, technology is important, you know, especially with the future. Um, 
relationships is big marketing is huge and it's kind of you're kind of you're not just a marketer you know or you're not just a coder you know for the app or the website you're actually looking at everything from different sides and it's kind of opened my mind and helped me kind of like unlearn and relearn some of the skills that i've had um prior to the venture seed definitely and then i know that the venture seed uh program is a multi-track one can you name like some of those tracks that they kind of bring you through that startup cycle yes um so we had the business ideation phase with um joey joey um yeah with joey and then he, you know, started a company called Earbits, and that was kind of the beginning. And then we did a law phase, I believe, which was with, um, I can't remember the exact name of the uh, law firm, but it was pretty much like understanding entities. How do we give equity out to companies? What does that look like? How to not give out too much equity, right? And then we went into the technology phase where we met a bunch of computer scientists, and they kind of, you know, kind of gave us advice on how and what it would look like, you know, when we kind of contract jobs out to get apps built and how we can pretty much have the best technology for what we're trying to do. And then we have the marketing, which is kind of social media marketing. How are we going to get our product out, making sure that we understand the metrics, right? And then the, uh, the KPIs and converting those people to our platforms. Because, uh, um, you know, the purpose of a startup is to make sure that people are converting to our platform, right? That, that they're using it, that they, you know, are gaining something from it and that it's changing their lives and some way you know we're making their lives easier so that's kind of one of the big phases and that's kind of the trek that we've kind of been on definitely um and then you know i think it's interesting because earlier on you kind of spoke to always having entrepreneurship around you in some way shape or form and always kind of thinking of it um but would you say that like you ever kind of thought of it as such a multi-faceted system or as something that required so much learning before I guess actually going through the process of learning it? I'm gonna say yes, um, absolutely. I mean, obviously not to this amount of detail because um, it, it just, it, it can get, it gets more detailed and more detailed as you go, but I'll say yes. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because like my mom who owned a hair uh, salon, right? She was doing hair and then she also had to, you know, do the cleaning. And then she was also running the marketing for her website, you know? And then she was also making sure that her entity was set up correctly so that if in doubt, you know, something was to happen in her salon, she wouldn't be sued, but her business, you know, could take upon those responsibilities, you know? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been seeing this since I was young, since I was in like, in this far back third, fourth grade. So I think I've kind of been conditioned to kind of think in this way and kind of wearing those different hats. And I feel like I've always kind of been a leader, obviously I was growing, but I've always been a leader and understanding how to wear different hats and take the hats off and taking time for yourself and putting your employees first was all, it's all has always been something that um, I, I've had in me. Definitely. What advice would you give like some of our viewers who might be thinking of starting a business for themselves or just pursuing entrepreneurship in any other way? Right. Um, I would say just do it. I mean, I think something that has stuck with me is I, I feel like most people, at least in my opinion, I don't know everything obviously, but most people kind of fail due to self-doubt. And I think it's something that I kind of constantly deal with and I see, you know, my peers dealing with too, but just do it, you know, like we're here for a very small amount of time in like world history, you know, so it's like, how can we kind of make our stamp, you know, inside of history and just do it, you know, it's like life is going to pass by and you don't want to be older and then realize you wish you could have done all these things, you know, so just do it and just have fun with it for sure. Yeah, and as somebody who is like, you know, taking on all these different things and pursuing uh, you know, creating your own business from the ground up. How do you kind of take care of yourself while you're taking on all those responsibilities? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say it's, I, I would say it's even more tough the fact that I'm in school, but I guess maybe once a week, just kind of going for a walk, maybe um, making yourself dinner, being like calling fa family and friends. You know, I, I feel like I have a very great. Um, circle of you know family and friends that are extremely supportive and understanding of what I'm doing and being patient. That's one thing that the venture seed has also kind of taught me is being patient. I feel like I look very far into the future and sometimes I could kind of lose sight of the present. And I think being, uh, being patient and kind of knocking off certain tasks at certain, you know, uh, like certain benchmarks is really important and kind of like putting the, writing those down, checking those boxes off and just being super patient with like how you, approach things is going to essentially be the best way to kind of like self-advocate for yourself and even have like self-care. Yeah, I mean, you speak to patience 
Uh, can you tell the viewers, I guess, how long you've been working on Divine and how long that's kind of been taking you as a process? Yeah, so um, Divine, I would say it's always something that I've kind of been wanting to do, where essentially Divine is a platform where we find talents and connect them to end users. And we do that by providing a quality service um, and we hire locally to help rebuild our communities, you know? So I think this is something that's always been, it kind of stuck with me um, is, and kind of going back to that as well, the architectural piece where I kind of started this mission because I listened to a TED talk by a guy named Michael Murphy and it was called Architecture to Heal, you know? And the basis and the premise of this conversation that he was kind of giving was, how a lot of these, you know, large multinational companies go into different, you know, places in the world and they actually ship their own labor to these places to do, you know, a lot of the jobs. But then coming to find out, you know, these places can do those jobs for those people and they can have a benefit off of it. And study shows that when people are working locally, it actually increases productivity of whatever project they're working on, you know? So this is kind of something that's been stuck with me where it's like, we don't have to, you know, ship thousands of people to, you know, New York to do an architectural or a construction project when I can develop teams there, you know, and then developing it to technology where, you know, we don't have to go outsource anymore because we have teams here that can do the job just as well, you know, and we need to be very careful um, as to kind of who we, not really necessarily who we contract, but understanding that if we, de if we develop our communities first, then everybody else is going to elevate and develop as well, you know. And that's kind of like my mission. And that's something that I've been kind of working on um, for about a year and a half or so. Definitely. Um, I guess another question I would have for you is what's been a more difficult part of, you know, getting your business off the ground than you expected it to be? Right. Um, I guess just having help, you know, um, I would say because, you know, you have to worry about websites, you know, taking notes, obviously I'm in school full time. I mentioned I'm an engineering student. So I guess it's being super spread out at one time, you know, where it's like, um, how do you kind of allocate your, your time and your resources? Because obviously money is a play too, right? Where you got to start hiring people to kind of fill out, you know, different documents for you, um, you know, running websites, you know, just stuff like that. So I think definitely just being kind of spread out and just kind of allocating more time to like different, um, different like subjects or different, you know, tasks at the moment. Definitely. And I mean, you speak to being spread out, I guess, to bridge off of that, what is the importance for you of, creating a support system and you know how can you get the support that you need from the people around you right. to kind of get your business running in right. i mean even outside of that deal with the stress of being an entrepreneur right um i mean this may sound kind of like cold-hearted in a way but i would say kind of breaking down your circle into like assets and liabilities you know where it's kind of like at this stage right now if you're not kind of providing value it doesn't even have to be towards a business, but if you're not providing value in my life or even in your own life to kind of elevate yourself in your community, then I would say that I'm not particularly gravitated towards individuals, you know? So no matter what, like even if I'm hanging out with some, some of my friends, we're still talking about the next technolo technolo technological innovations, you know? Um, even if I'm talking to my family, we're still talking about how we can expand to, you know, different countries and what's, what's the latest things going on. So I would say that's kind of the key, you know, because that support system are going to be the people that you're going to be kind of struggling with. And we all are struggling together, you know, and we're all trying to figure it out. We're all trying to make ends meet. So I think that essentially is how you're going to figure out and make, you know, the best support system. That's what I've been doing. Definitely. And I know you have like a website, you have a lot of things off the ground. Um, what specifically could any viewers at home or anybody who's interested do to support you and help you out with your business and your endeavors? For sure. Um, so I, you can follow, you can go to my website, it's honorablewalker.com. And you can see um, about a few websites that I, uh, some projects I've been working on. And I'm also very excited to announce that I have launched a media platform called the divinemedia.info. And essentially it's a media platform that highlights um, stories in our community, you know, that I feel like needs to be elevated. And, um, and I have found one of the best writers ever. So kind of going back to, you know, creating and finding talent. I found talent and he wanted to help rebuild a community. And I feel like there's no better way to do that than creating a media platform to kind of control these images and control the narrative of our community. And just kind of shining, uh, just being a media in more of a positive light. Um, so you can find me there. It's called um, the divine media dot um, info. For sure. And I think just to wrap up as we hit our mark, um, is there anything that you would like to leave as a closing word um, to any of the viewers? Um, 
thank you for being for tuning in. Uh, Hidden Genius is legit, you know, um, and I'm super happy I got this opportunity. Also, I sell sustainable clothing, American made as well, going back to the mission, you know, locally uh, sourced. So um, you can go to um, divinity to infinity.com, but you can find all this on my uh, honorablewalker.com. Uh, so thank you, and I appreciate it. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Honorable, for joining us today and, you know, sharing your story, sharing a little bit with us about your company and, you know, just kind of walking us through what that process is like. Um, as always, we would love to thank the Hidden Genius Project for hosting us and having us, as well as Comcast for helping us put this all together. And that is our show for this week. We'll be back this time next week uh, with another guest and some more to talk about. Thank you, Karen. Peace.